Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Michael Landis and today we're having a cocktail party. And so we're gonna have a really fun and very exciting adventure uh, with some of my favorite cheese makers and mongers around the country. And today we're going to be starting off with Jessica. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Michael. Um, we are making a cocktail to pair with our cheese called Green Hill. I'm from Sweetgrass Dairy. We're located in Southwest Georgia. And our cheese is a double cream cow's milk with a white blooming rind, which lends itself a little bit easier to, I think, summertime cocktails. But I really wanted to play off with some of the wintertime fruits. So um, we are making what we call the Rebel Alliance. And I did not make this cocktail. Um, this is made by our good friend and mixologist named Tristan Anderson from Atlanta. And um, it is a gin-based cocktail. So it is um, one and a half ounces of Cokey Americano. And it is, I'm building it in a mixing glass. And then it's an ounce of gin. I'm using Bar Hill gin. It's one of our favorites. We really love the honey notes to it. It's very botanical. Um, and not too piney. And a little bit of Leopold Brothers maraschino cherry liqueur. So really giving this really natural, bright cherry fruit flavor to it. And um, it's one and a half ounces of cookie americano, one ounce of gin, and a half ounce of maraschino cherry liqueur. So I'm going to mix it here in my mixing glass. If I had a tall spoon, I'd probably do that better, but you can tell I'm not a bartender. Um, and then I'm going to strain it right here into a coupe glass and garnish it with this really beautiful um, lemon peel here. And I've got some different uh, cherry inspired accompaniments here to go with our Green Hill. I've got the Fine Cheese Company toast for cheese with cherries, almonds, and linseeds, some food for thought, spice pear, uh, cherry preserves, and then some amarina cherries in wild cherries and syrup. So all really, really wonderful things to go with Green Hill and uh, really trying to bring out that seasonal flavor profiles with this really rich double cream cow's milk cheese. Wow, that was fantastic and very fast. I really, uh, I really, uh, Love the way that you did that. That was very, very efficient about being able to put your cocktail together. I have to tell you that I've been enjoying Green Hill all day today. I started off this morning with a CBS session, which I used the Green Hill, and uh, I've been literally snacking on it. It was actually my lunch, and it's been my breakfast, and it's been also, at this point, I think it's just going to be my dinner. Well, thank you. I think, uh, you know, these blooming rinded cheeses are so great um, during the holidays to, well, if we were normally able to celebrate and get together, they're great on cheese boards and really just, you know, that unctuous, really luxurious texture and, and lends itself to a lot of different pairings. So how did you have it this morning on its own or paired with something? Uh, you know, it was, uh, it, I paired that up with a, uh, a nice Syrah from Washington uh, and uh, added in a little bit of uh, cherries and fig from uh, uh, the uh, Girl Meets Dirt out in, out in uh, uh, the Pacific Northwest. So it was uh, really fun being able to do that. And of course, I have the Golden Retriever trying to snack on, the st on it itself. So Yes, right. well, um, that sounds delicious. I will have to try Green Hill and cherries and Syrah together as well. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so uh, stick around and uh, we'll come back to you uh, uh, near the end and uh, let me go ahead and uh, introduce you to our next uh, cocktail and uh, that is going to be with uh, Jody, and uh, she's going to be bringing us a really fun uh, cocktail herself and uh, you have the Rosemary Fitzgerald if I'm right. All right, uh, so I'm, let's go uh, tell us about that and uh, we'll get going here. Excellent. I'm Jody Olson Reed from Shepherd's Way Farms in Minnesota. And today I'm going to be making a Rosemary Fitzgerald to go with our Frisago. 
Um, any bartenders or mixologists will be appalled at my methods, but we're gonna go forward anyway. The Rosemary Fitzgerald is, I'm making it with uh, Metropolitan, which is a gin from Loon Liquors that's about 10 miles from me. And this is an organic gin. It's very complex. They have 10 uh, botanicals in this gin, so it has a lot of different layers. Uh, so we're going to use this as the foundation of our Rosemary Fitzgerald. And I don't know where a fly came from in December, but. So we're going to start out with two ounces of the gin. I'm never this precise on my own. I'm pretty sure I know what two ounces looks like without measuring. And then we're going to add some rosemary simple syrup that I made ahead of time. And it's just um, dried rosemary with sugar and water. And I think the recipe's attached to the glass here. Cook it until the sugar is melted. Let it cool, strain it so you don't have all the little pieces of rosemary, and you can keep it in the fridge for quite a while. And yeah, I don't usually put quite this much simple syrup. I don't like mine as quite as sweet, but we're gonna have three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup and a little bit of lemon juice for the tart. Half ounce. And then they have uh, their own aromatic bitters. Um, you can use bitters of your choice to give it a little more depth of flavor. I'm going to use a whole dropper here. And add some ice to my shaker. And this is one of my favorite sounds. I'm not as good as the bartender. You can shake it long enough until it kind of ice up the outside and you melt a little bit of water in your drink. Oops. And if I was a real bartender, I would strain this one more time. I'm just going to use the strainer that's on the top. And you can really smell a lot of the botanicals even without the rosemary garnish added. We'll put a little sprig of rosemary in there for the garnish. And this is just a really, it's nice and light, but all of the layers give it a depth and a richness that I really can't resist. And I've paired this with our Prejago, which is the first cheese that we ever made in 1998. It's all sheet milk. Uh, with a natural rind. If you've been in the cheese world since 98 or 2000, yeah, I don't remember what date I switched it over, but if you've been around a while, you would remember Prejago being black wax, which was how we first made this cheese, because that was the fashion back then, and there weren't a lot of natural rinded cheeses, especially American cheeses at the time. But over the years, as consumers became more sophisticated in their cheese tastes, and as I became more experienced as a cheesemaker, I switched it over to a natural rinded cheese, which allowed it to develop a lot more interesting characteristics. So I paired these two together because uh, the Frijago is a really approachable, fairly mild sheet milk cheese. It's grassy with a nutty finish. And at first taste, it's very straightforward and almost simple. But as the flavor builds, it has a few more layers, and that's where the nuttiness comes in, and then the richness of the sheet milk comes through. And this one is aged about six months, so it's semi-hard. And with the cocktail, I paired these because it brings, they both bring out the best in each other, I think. I really like um, some of the different flavors in the gin. It's got, uh, kind of a current, black current flavor, cardamom, a little bit of anise, a lot of citrus, and then the rosemary also is a flavor layer that's in the gin. 
And those two just together, they bring out different characteristics. So cheese tastes different by itself than it does with the cocktail. I've done a lot of research. Uh, and that's my goal, which isn't very complicated, but works really well for them not to overshadow each other or overwhelm each other, but to bring out the nuances and the flavors. And uh, the balance, I feel like I know when the balance is right, it was when I want more of each of them together, one after the other. Um, and I really, I also like using our local gin. If you can't find Metropolitan Loon Liquors, I don't know how widely that they go at the moment. If you can't find it, I would look for another um, fairly complex gin that has a lot of uh, aromatics and uh, a floral note to it. They have a method of making their gin that's distillation, distillation and vapor infusion, which I don't know a lot about the process, but I think that that's not as common, but maybe, I don't know. So that is my cocktail cheese combination. And if you have any questions, let me know. Wow, that was fabulous. I really enjoyed that. I, I, I think that the addition of having the rosemary, uh, you know, I use, uh, rosemary with uh, in the crackers or in, in the spreads, things like that, to really bring out the flavors of the cheese because it does so well. So I think that's really interesting to be able to add that into the cocktail, which should you know give it a really nice additional flavor. Yeah, it's really herbaceous and really balances with the creaminess and the nuttiness of the cheese. I like that together. Good. Well, thank you. That was excellent. All right going to Amy. So, uh, and Amy's going to be bringing us a goat mule cocktail. And uh, I think that's just, uh, you know, really fun in that direction because, uh, you know, uh, the, the mule cocktail has been around for a long time, but going with a goat, that sounds uh, kind of, uh, you know, like it's got a kick to it. So go ahead and uh, let's hear about your goat mule. Hi, everybody. My name is Amy Spitznagel. I am the owner of Idol Farms. We're a goat, a farmstead goat creamery based out of Michigan, um, to be exact, Northport, Michigan, which is on a peninsula, Leelanau Peninsula. Um, if you're looking at Michigan, it's the pinky part of the, the hand in Michigan. And so we're surrounded by the Great Lakes, which feeds our pastures, and we are pasture based farmstead goat dairy. And we've been around for about 10 years now. So um, the cheese I wanted to share with you today, it's called Idle Puck. It's our newest branding. And um, you can see we use the acronym GOAT, which otherwise known as greatest of all time, <laughs> and paired it kind of with a hockey theme of Idle Puck. Um, why is that? Is because it's the size size and shape of a real hockey puck. I have um, a hockey player in my family, which is my my 14-year-old uh, son. So we are big into the hockey world here in Michigan, and we wanted to base <laughs> a goat cheese around it just because it ironically fit into um, our branding and everything. Um, so Idle Puck is not really new. It's been around. It was, um, we made a one pound version called Idle Gray, formerly known as Idle Gray. And so we said, well, we, this is our Idle Gray. It's got the ash in the middle. It's a, a surface ripened cheese. Um, and we said, well, let's make a smaller format of this one pound so it's easier for people to buy because maybe they don't want to commit to a big one pound cheese. So we started making these little four ounce versions and then realized, hey, this is the same size and shape as a hockey puck, let's rebrand it. So it's rebranded as Idle Puck now. And we just came out with this branding this year. Um, it did win a first place at ACS in 2019 and it is up for a Good Food Award this year, 2020. Um, so you can see I cut into a little bit of this Idle Puck. Um, you can see the rind, it's a wrinkly, bloomy rind. 
And of course, hand painted with the vegetable ash makes the little uh, line. And then it can develop a creamy underneath, a creamy um, layer underneath the rind, which we have here. And this specific cheese was made around Halloween. So it's just getting to its peak ripeness right now. But um, of course, with any of our surface ripened cheeses, um, we can, you can age that indefinitely depending on, um, you know, your, your preference. You can age it and it just gets harder. It gets denser um, and it dries out a little bit. So it gets smaller. And so you could even age it until it's almost like a Parmesan that you could grate it. So we do have a best buy date on the back of our packaging and that's kind of meant for an American palate, what most Americans are used to. But if you want a stronger cheese, ignore that part of the, um, because it is a surface ripened cheese, you can age it indefinitely. Um, so what I have paired with the cheese, um, I bought little, I had fun at the grocery store today trying to pick out what would go well with this cheese and this cocktail together which I'll get to in a minute. But I bought these gingerbread orange um, little cookies. I bought fig um, crackers, which is a very traditional thing to have around the holiday too. And I also found orange fig spread, which is a really great pairing with this, with this cocktail. So moving into our cocktail, you can see I have the traditional mule mug here in the copper mug. I made a little sample up, but today I'm gonna to use our personalized mugs that we just got in time for the holidays. We got a, a nice Yeti mug here that has the GOT logo on it. It's backwards on your camera, but <laughs> there we go. And um, I picked um, a version of the mule just because it's a, it's a popular drink during the holidays. And I thought it was a fun play on goat, mule. Perhaps they were both at the original Christmas story in the manger. Um, you know, the, the Jesus and Mary came in on the mule or the, or the donkey, whatever it might have been. I'm sure there was probably a goat involved in the, in the Christmas story somewhere. Um, so I thought it would be a fun take on that. And so I was playing around with the letters G O A T. So I'm coming up with what goes into this cocktail. So the first letter is G. So we're going to try the ginger beer. So we're going to put two ounces of the ginger beer in, and I already put ice in, ice in my mug. So I'm just going to pour that ginger beer over the ice. Then the next letter, of course, is O. So we picked orange juice. So one ounce is in the recipe, but you can adjust, you know, the ginger beer or the orange juice, whatever you want, put more or less in that. So we've got the G O. Our next um, letter is an A. So I thought an Aperol would go well in this drink, and it's a beautiful color. So if you don't want to use a opaque mug. You could use a clear glass because this does turn a beautiful color. You can see it has that orange, um, orange color to it. So we're adding the A, the Aperol. And so I had a hard time coming up with the tea and I was thinking tequila, but that's not really traditionally in a mule. And so of course there's a brand of vodka called Tito's, which is kind of the one of the original craft vodkas in the United States. And I like to try to keep it, you know, US based. So here we go with the Tito vodka. And for the garnishes, you can do a couple different options. Um, I sliced some orange, which is really good in like, uh, you know, uh, in with mixing with the orange juice. And I also found some candied ginger that I put on a skewer with the orange. I also found different types of ginger. Some of it has sugar on it, some of it does not. So whatever you find in, in your local market. And then um, these orange slices also come dried. You can find them dried different places or candied. 
So you could float that around a cocktail, it would be really pretty. But I'm using a fresh orange. So stirring that up and voila, we've got our goat mule co cocktail. And goats have like a long history. I don't know if you, maybe um, Jody from Minnesota knows from her Scandinavian roots in Minnesota that uh, the goat was a traditional Christmas um, figure. This is a Swedish goat and Santa Claus used to be an old goat in Finland, in Finland and Sweden. <laughs> So it goes way back from ancient times about the tradition with goats and Santa Claus and goat Yule and, and um, so goats kind of fit in with the whole holiday spirit as well. So cheers. <laughs> cheers, that is wonderful. I really love the stories. I, I think that that was a, a great play on words and uh, I really love your background. Your whole ambiance there is so Christmas and the Christmas tree and everything. That's just so nice to see. We don't have snow yet, but it's coming. Oh, uh, well, you know, that's not something generally we miss, but uh, you know, it. Uh, uh, we had frost here the other day in Tampa. So, uh, you know, we're, we're getting, uh, we're get, we, don't, we won't get anywhere near you, you yet, but it was, uh, it's been chilly for those of us that are thin blood again. So, <laughs> so that was wonderful. Thank you. Stick around and uh, uh, we'll uh, come back for a little talk. All right. So coming up next is uh, Jill Allen. And uh, she's going to be bringing in a really fun uh, cocktail, a juicy pear sake cocktail, which I think is really going to be fun. Just love that idea. And uh, so, uh, welcome, Jill. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Excellent, good. excellent. Yeah. So oh, good to see lovely. you again, Michael. You got your tree lit and everything. I do. I do. I love Christmas. I love everything about uh, this fall going into the winter time of year. So I'm so excited to share with you today our Tillamook Makers 2016, our four-year-old, which is getting very, very close to turning five years. Um, and then I have it paired uh, with a, a wonderful Oregon sake um, that's actually uh, made and brewed right down a few hundred miles of, of Oregon coast here um, from Tillamook. Um, it's actually in Forest Grove, which um, actually is probably, it's, it's a little bit closer than that. But um, what I want to share with you guys today is one of my favorite drinks um, that we've been making here during this festive time of year. Um, pears are also... Um, a produce in Oregon, and with it being also National Pear uh, Month last uh, month, I thought it would be great to pair it with our 2016. Um, our Tillamook White Vintage 2016 has this flavor of unexpected zing with these caramel notes that are also very bright and um, sweet. So when you pair it with the pear, with its natural sugars and sweetness, it just has an overall presence of just a wonderful, crisp, bright, um, umami caramel note in your mouth that I, I really would love to share with you guys today. Um, the cocktail that um, I have put together today, I actually created a puree um, and I put it into my shaker. What I did is I took a very uh, juicy, large pear, um, cut it up into cubes, pureed it with about, you know, I don't really measure anything, but probably one teaspoon to two teaspoons of um, bee local honey. It's a wildflower honey that's also um, harvested here in Oregon. So what grows together goes together. Um, blend that up, put it in your shaker, um, and then you can add the following instructions, you know, about two ounces of this wonderful Momokawa uh, which is very crisp and has this tropical flora, floral flavors um, and shake it up with some ice. Um, I think I probably have more than two ounces in here, um, but I prefer my uh, winter drinks chilled. I think it's fun to get um, with friends by the fireplace or on your couch and get all cozied up uh, and make a cocktail that's a little bit chilly. So reminiscent of being outside, but being inside and having um, a great time with your friends. Um, so the sweetness of the local honey, 
the uh, tropical floral notes of the momokawa uh, with the pear puree, um, chilled, and then I top it with already a sweetened uh, pear chip and just have it float on top. And it just looks very beautiful. Um, then when I have that paired with my 2016, uh, just to elevate it for the holidays, I like to take a, another fresh juicy pear, uh, slice it into a beautiful pear chip size, uh, slice the 2016, um, and then also to drizzle a little bit of the um, Oregon honey on top. So it also makes a beautiful uh, cheese board presentation uh, with your all your local ingredients and then top it with some uh, crushed walnuts. So it's also bringing in other flavors of fall. And so you have a very lovely uh, one little biter that you can make for all of your guests or for yourself um, with your cocktail. Um, and Michael, I think uh, what's also very special about this is um, the, the makers that uh, Tilma produces um, has been created and, and stored away for many, many years to where it's developing these flavors over time, all from one same recipe. Um, our cheddars um, are made with one recipe uh, here in Tillamook for the makers. And um, it's produced with a, um, this 2016 is produced with an FPC enzyme. So it's vegetarian friendly. Um, and then just other simple ingredients of milk and salt. Um, so in culture, so we have this simple uh, cheddar that develops into these wonderful robust flavors over time, specifically with the caramel notes and that wonderful unexpected zing that really brightens up any little dish that you make with the product. So um, cheers to, uh, to, to having a cocktail and a cheese bite with you, Michael. Um, I'm really excited for you to try this as well. That is fabulous. You know, uh, Saki has always been a, a friend, a, a, a favorite of mine. Uh, I remember the first time that I had it in a box uh, at a bar because of the way they serve it. And uh, it, it's always been something that I've wanted to do with a, uh, as a cocktail. And I think that especially pears are one of my favorites. So that'll be really fun to be able to uh, make that. And of course, you know, uh, being able to have more of the Tillamook uh, Masters, you know, having more of these. I love it that you guys sent me uh, uh, a vertical. I, I have uh, mm -hmm. four years in a row now, and it just happened to work out that this morning I did a CBS section, a session, and uh, since I had this and I had a 2015, I thought it'd be fun. So you're in a session this morning uh, with, uh, with a little bit of cheddar and uh beer excellent michael and the flight it's all the same recipe but each year they start to evolve and change whether it be the texture becoming a little bit more drier a little bit more shatters more of those wonderful tyrosine crystals that bring on that auditory crunch and then just the fla different flavor developments the different subtleties some will pop out stronger than others through the years um, our makers, we have them all the way up to 10 years this year. And so it's a, it's a wonderful product that you can experience different nuances from the time of year that, that uh, the cheddar was produced. Yeah, well, I have to say they're one of my favorites and uh, I can't wait to dig into them over the next couple of weeks. So thank you. Really appreciate it. Cheers, lovely Michael. cocktail and lovely uh, surroundings. So. All right, so let's uh, let's move on to our last and final uh, cocktail tonight, which I, again I'm looking forward to because uh, for me uh, I already am ready for an old fashioned as the, this is kind of like a direction that I love to go in. Uh, I've uh, for the show I've already made two so far uh, different versions, and tonight. I'm just going to celebrate with a really just uh, uh, classic that I'll have. So it's uh, really good to see you, Denise. I really appreciate you taking the time and coming in. And that looks like a fabulous spread. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you and you can tell us all about it. Oh, thank you, Michael. And thank you for inviting me to this lovely cocktail party. It's really great to see you and be in such wonderful company. 
Um, I think this is a very festive idea and having a cocktail and cheese pairing event is something that people could really use these days. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Denise Labrie. I'm the sales team lead for Tillamook Specialty and Deli Cheese. I live in Northern California. I've had the honor along with my sales team of launching Tillamook's Makers Reserve Vintage Cheddars program to the industry. And Jill talked a little bit about it already. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more about the vintage I chose, which is 2017. But first, let's get to my cocktail, which I'm calling a uh, hometown old fashioned. And I chose an old fashioned because to me, whiskey tastes like the holidays. I enjoy a whiskey cocktail on special occasions. So the aromas and flavors of whiskey really remind me of celebrations, whiskey cake and bourbon balls. So. Um, as I mentioned, I pair my old fashioned with the Maker's Reserve 2017 Vintage Cheddar, and I'll touch on that a little bit more later. Right now, I'll make the cocktail for you, which it's not an unfamiliar cocktail, but they're so fun to make, so I'm going to go through it for you right now. So it's an orange peel and a maraschino cherry. To that, I'm adding about a half an ounce of orange simple syrup that I made. I'm using the Spruits Eats recipe and it's super yummy and orangey. I'm adding two ounces of Westward whiskey and this is a nod to um, what grows together goes together. Westward whiskey is a craft brewery in Oregon. Um, and so, oops, I'm gonna move that over to the shaker and muddle it up. And muddling is so fun because it releases the aromas of everything in the shaker. And then I'm gonna strain it into the glass. And you'll notice I'm not using ice. And, and I tried it both ways as I was making my selection. The reason I'm not using ice is because I feel like when it's um, straight up without the ice, the heat of the whiskey allows the butter fat of the cheese to stay really creamy and rich and release all the aromas that come from the milk. So I'll finish it up with another cherry and another orange peel. And I like one for the rim of the glass just to give it a little bit more orange. And that's my cocktail. So cheers to you. So now for my pairing. Um, I'm going to go to the 2017 Maker's Reserve, and um, this cheese starts with very bright citrus notes, and then it turns creamy on your palate, and it has a rich custardy finish. So I paired it with the Old Fashioned and a very, very thinly shaved piece of candy orange peel, which I've made, um, and a little bit of dark chocolate, and it's Cho dark chocolate, also from Oregon, nod to make grow, what, what grows together, grows together. And what I get from that lingering finish of the cocktail and the cheese together is just like a boozy creamsicle bourbon ball. So that's my pairing, and I'm going to enjoy it because I've been watching, sitting here looking at it for a little while now. So it really gives me that nostalgic connection to, like I said, Christmas parties gone by with whiskey and all the treats that have whiskey in it. So, like I said, cheers to you. That has warmed my heart having a uh, variation on my favorite uh, uh, cocktail. Uh, I've been a, a bourbon fan for a, a long time, and uh, I think it, it's like anything. There's an acquired taste to it, and it just, uh, it soothes and makes me happy. If I could have everybody uh, come back, uh, you know, pop back in here, uh, we'll get everybody together. Because I first off, I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time today to uh, hang out here. I know it's the holidays, and you've got so much to do, but 
I, I certainly appreciate it. And I can tell you that, uh, that everybody that uh, uh, is coming around, we had uh, uh, 84 people that were sitting in with us. And uh, we did have a question uh, through here. And uh, uh, it wanted, uh, she wanted to know whether or not or uh, how do we get that goat mug? <laughs> uh, yeah, if you want to message us on our on Facebook or our website or social or um, Instagram, we can you can order one from us. We just got them in. Wonderful, wonderful. So, what do you guys think of the different cocktails today? Amazing! I can't wait to try them all out with appropriate cheese as well. Yeah, I need to gather some ingredients. And it's great to hear what, from a cheese maker that's so familiar with the cheese, what they find brings out the best flavor with a cocktail. And I think as an, someone who entertains, you know, you're always searching for something to wow your guests and your family with. And so to try something that's been tried is true by someone so familiar with the cheese is a really cool opportunity. You know, it's it's really interesting to be able to have uh, uh, cocktails that that go with cheese because uh, you know when I first started talking about uh, the different th different things that we can do, cocktails have never been on the number one list. A lot of people are like, oh, I want beer, I want wine, I want you know uh, uh, anything, but uh, uh, I just can't think of it. And I thought, well, you know, it's 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 definitely possible to be able to have a a cocktail with cheese. And I think you guys proved that today that uh, we do have that. So uh, Denise, yeah. would you be, give the honors of a toast? Sure. Like I said, it was an honor to be with you all today. And so this is about friends. So may good and faithful friends be yours wherever you may roam. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Cheers, and I hope everybody has a wonderful holiday. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thanks Thanks you stay Thank you, Michael. Healthy and safe. Well, you know, I know we're all anticipating finishing off the year and hoping that this thing gets behind us so much, and it'll be really nice for us to be able to hopefully get together in the near future and see each other and be able to enjoy a cocktail together. So, yeah. We'll look forward to doing this in person. Yes. So again, thank you so much for uh, taking the time today. I greatly appreciate it. And uh, I know that uh, uh, those that are interested in getting the recipes, they'll be able to find them on michaellandischeese.com. In the recipe section, there's a whole, all of these are in the cocktails. Uh, I do have to make an adjustment for Jessica. Uh, and, but, uh, you know, I'll get that in. I promise that you'll get uh, your update on there. And uh, everybody you else, like, what was that? I said, I'm holding you to it, Michael. All Understood. right. All right. So, <laughs> so everybody else, again, thank you so much. It was a pleasure being able to have you on. You were magnificent. And uh, I look forward to the next adventure that we have together. And uh, even if it is on Zoom. Thank yep. you. Thank you, Michael. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Take care. Be careful. All right. Cheers.